This video is going to be a breakdown of the latest articles on the Halo Waypoint website, with more news on Halo Infinite. But before we get into that, as you can see, 98.8% of you aren't subscribed, which is not surprising coming from a man with 11 subscribers. But if you'd like to, even though scales, feel free. Going into the Inside Infinite June article, it focuses on the aftermath of questions people have after seeing the trailers last E3. They start by talking about how Halo Infinite will function as a live service game, and that seasons will play a big role. It's a concept people who play MCC should be familiar with. Roughly every three months they're going to start a new season, which will come with a ton of updates, new gameplay content, new events, new systems, new armors, new progressions, Generally, lots of new things. They say the decision to have the seasons come every three months was to ensure the players could experience all the content available in the season without it getting tiresome. However, they have said that you won't need to wait three months for bug fixes and they'll have regular updates to fix bugs in season. In the first season, they said they're going to have many different events that players can experience and get rewarded for participating in, and that certain big weeks will feature events that have new activities and specific battle pass-like reward tracks. The more specific details of these events will be provided before the launch of the game, but they say to be on the lookout for a special event type with specific thematic rewards called a fracture. They go on to say the battle pass and other main vectors will supply cannon customization. The fracture and some events will at times lean into things further afield and more or less cannon armors like the Yoroi samurai armor that was shown in the multiplayer trailer along with this render of it following on from the events that are going to happen in season the questions asked what are the various ways players are going to earn and unlock cosmetics which is answered with the battle pass both the free track and the premium track will reward cosmetics, along with completing challenges, skill rewards, and event tracks. There are legacy rewards. One example is reaching Halo 5's rank of 152, and the final way to get cosmetics is by completing some campaign challenges. There are also going to be Season 1 giveaways, where you'll simply be rewarded for logging into the game. When it comes to the topic of the Battle Pass, they say that first and foremost they want to ensure that the Halo Battle Pass won't be a grind for players and want them to be able to enjoy the game and work through the Battle Pass passively instead of grinding as a race to get to the end. As well as that, all Battle Passes will be permanent in the game. That means that Season 1 Battle Pass will be around forever so you can always go back to that Battle Pass and put your progression towards it to get the very first rewards. I won't go into all the details that are in the article but this next section is about the new Halo Waypoint website and app. With the release of Halo Infinite, the Halo Waypoint website will be getting reworked and there will be a release of a new Halo Waypoint companion app on mobile where you can stay connected with your account, customize your Spartan, monitor your progression and gameplay stats. This new companion app is not only going to support Halo Infinite, but is also going to be able to support Halo the Master Chief Collection and Halo 5. Along with the news of the new Halo Waypoint app, they've released some work in progress renders of what the site and the web app will look like. And within these images, they've shown what the customization screen will look like in game and the battle pass screen. The article's concluded with a post by Joe Staten saying that while he said that the Master Chief is the heart of Halo during the E3 panel, that wasn't the whole truth. And that as the story progresses, the Spartan that you customize and the one you play in multiplayer will become a character vital to the future story of the Halo franchise, meaning that it could follow a very similar path to Halo Reach, where you play as your own Spartan in the game. And he finishes with saying that the first seasonal theme is going to be the Heroes of Reach, and there are very specific reasons for choosing the Reach theme, and says that it's a key location for Spartans of old and a focal point for new generations of Spartans after the events of Halo 5. Moving on to the last article I'm covering called Parallel Threads. It begins with the announcement of a new book called The Rubicon Protocol, which takes place on Zeta Halo before Halo Infinite, along a group of Spartans. Moving on to MCC, with the launch of Season 7, they've released the Mark 7 helmet from Halo Infinite into Halo 4 that can be unlocked via the exchange in MCC for free. 
they then go over a few more helmets that are going to be present in Halo Infinite. Starting with an updated Anubis helmet, which was last seen in Halo 5. Then moving on to a new helmet, the Mark V Zeta helmet, which seems to have the same feel as other Mark V helmets that have been seen in the past. Then we have the Cavalino helmet, which looks to be in the SR-152 armor coating. And finally the Gen 1 Grenadier helmet, which debuted in Halo Reach. The article ends with another announcement of an upcoming book called Halo Divine Wind, which is following on from the Covenant faction last seen working with the Banished in Halo Shadows of Reach, and the correction of the Spartan Commander's name, which is pronounced Agrinya. Spartan Agrinya. While there's still been a lack of communication on when the Halo Infinite flighting will actually take place, the Halo Twitter account seems to be very persistent in making sure everyone is signed up for the Halo Insider build on PC and console and verifying the email twice so that when it does go live everyone will be notified and have a chance to play the technical previews later this summer. And for now that's all. If by any chance you're not one of the 11 subscribers that I have, consider subscribing. I'm aiming for 12 by the time I put out the next video.